This is the strawberry cider that I made last year, September. The first brew I ever did. It's got crystal clear because it sat for quite a while. I'm a bit scared that the bottle's going to explode. Not that that's happened yet, but we'll go outside. Of 2013, along with some lovely sediment full of vitamins. That's a really nice carbonation, actually, because it's had time to sit. Oh my god, that's so good. Hello, uh, today I'm going to do a strawberry cider because I've just uh, tried the last bottle uh, that I had that was seven months old and it was bloody lovely. Uh, I couldn't get hold of the Ribena but I did get hold of some strawberry which is uh, Caribbean strawberry. It didn't have any nasties in it. Um, like preservatives and stuff that can ruin it. What else is in this little goodie bag? <laughs> bag of sugar, obviously, needed. The three litres of apple juice and the one litre of strawberry. Um, but we've got to start by boiling this up because apparently it will get rid of all the nasties that are left in there. Okay, so we're just going to get this in a pan and get it boiling. Get it boiling. Oh, that smells really nice. It smells really nice. Plus, it makes your kitchen smell really good. So that's a litre of strawberry. Get it boiled in, and then we can turn it down. I've got a lid on someone. Just put a lid on. So yeah, it's a litre of strawberry, boil it up, 5-10 minutes should be good. And uh, take it off and let it cool down, and then we'll go on. Yeah, as I'm sure you know, you can use Camden tablets, but these work just as well. These are... Yeah. Oh, I need a yeast. Have we got any yeast? Yes, I have plenty of yeast. I don't like this yeast, it, it, it really smells. It smells like, um, like uh, gone off eggs. It's, it's really bad. I prefer this. It's what I've always used and uh, it's just good. I just feel the need to tell you, um, because I'm still quite woo, like happy about it. Uh, I recently managed to purchase 14 Demijohns. Um, wow, a whole goodie box full of stuff. Along with, wow, it, ca it came with so much. It was basically... There was an old guy uh, who used to do a lot of brewing back in the day, and I'm talking back in the day. Some of the stuff I've got here is dated 1969, which is just insane. And something that's recently came to my knowledge is that Boots Pharmacy used to make brewing equipment, which is mad. Obviously, I wouldn't dream of using any of these in a brew, but it's the fact that, you know, back in the day, look, wine use, 39p. 39p, it's insane. Citric acid, um, I've got loads of stuff with it. I even got these, which I can't even, I've looked, but I can't even buy them. Like, I can't find them to buy them unless I buy them in bulk, which I don't really want to do. I got two filters, two different types of filters. This one I recently used, I will show you the wine that came out. It was really good. It came in the pads, the papers, everything. I don't even think this guy looked in the box. And it also came with something that I'm really excited about, which it might be small, but it's a wine press and it's intact. All the parts are there. Oh, if I can get into the box. And it works as well. It's really cool. I've looked online because I was going to buy one of these before I found this bargain of a century. 
And these were going for between 50 and 100 pound. In the box I've got a hand caulking machine, as it's called. Um, again, thrown in the box. Not wanted. Discarded. I was told anything you don't want, put in the bin. Which is just insane because some of the stuff is, is just so cool. I got whoa, about five or six boxes of these. You just like crimp them on with your fingers at the end. At the end of your bottling. Got gold. There's just there's just lots. Hell in there. <laughs> he just, he had a massive setup, but obviously back in the day it was a lot cheaper and he, he just never got around to using it, I think. It just goes to show that if you look around you can still get a bargain. I am attempting to grow some stuff to use in the press, including well I've got a ton of strawberries. Uh, there's strawberries there, there's strawberries there. Uh, this is strawberry along with pansies, this is strawberry. It's just started to rain. Lovely British weather. Been gardening all week. Uh, this is my little allotment in my garden. Got the tiniest little grapevine going over here. Um, he won't give me anything because he's, he's practically a baby. But I have another one. <laughs> I have a larger one. Uh, he's just starting to bud. I've got him up there. Him up there. There's more of him there. And he comes all the way down off here, down there. And uh, this is just, you know. I've never had a fruit off of him, but I've had him quite a while now, so we'll see. Along with all of this, just felt the need to show you, basically, what I'm up to. But yeah. It's five litre. I fill it up with four litre. The last time I used a... I can't remember the name. Where well, you put the yeast in, and then you put some sugar in, and then you put some water in, you stir it, clean film, and leave it. A yeast starter, that was it. The last time I used one of them, this over-fermented. It went all up through the airlock, it came out, it was all over the top, and I'm talking about five of these, I think it was four or five, maybe, of these, and it was all lined up over the kitchen side, and they all over-fermented, and it was an absolute mess. Uh, so yeah, to avoid that, I just I, I always pitch that in, and it works. But yeah, we'll come back, I've just got to give this another shake. So we've got damage on, and we'll just get one tablet straight in wherever that went oh, there it is I mentioned it before but these are just so cheap so cheap and they do the job that's just cold water but yeah let that fizz up leave it for a little while and uh, we'll come back this has just come to a rolling boil so I can turn it down now just a low, pop the lid back on, there's little holes, a little, little the nasty escape out. This is still fermenting, no it isn't. You can tell I've been at the home brew, can't you? This is still sterilising. <laughs> uh, the, the bad thing about these tablets is it a minimum of 30 minutes. Um, and that's ready to be cooled down and I've forgotten to sterilise my funnel. Um, which is fine because I'll improvise, as I always do. I'm sure. I'm sure it would turn out fine. This smells really good. It smells it so good. Something outside smells like it's burning though. Something outside smells like it's burning? Yeah. Oh, you do know that I'm videoing here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that I'm talking about how nice this Caribbean <laughs> strawberry is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll come back when that's done. Okay, I've just taken this off. Uh, you don't need to boil it and boil it and boil it. As soon as it comes to the rolling boil, which should be good enough. Uh, and to save doing a separate pan of boiling water, I'm just going to go straight in with a cup and a half of caster sugar. God, this feels like a, uh, a cooking program. I'm not going to put in any like utensils or anything. That will do what it needs to do, which is dissolve. Just give it a little bit of a swirl. Um, and yeah, just uh, I'll probably put that in the sink with some cold water, but I've got some brewing equipment in there being sterilized at the minute. Um, just give this a big old shake to make sure that the, the liquid touches all parts, obviously. Uh, but I've got to say that in case you're new. Um, if you're ever sterilizing something, make sure that your solution touches all parts of your vessel. Uh, pretty simple. And uh, 
while that's doing that, I'm going to enjoy another glass of homebrew. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the wine da -da -da -da, that I used the wine filter on that I got for free. Um, I don't even need to hold it up to the light. I think you can see that that is, you know, absolutely crystal. And there's no sediment in there. Shouldn't really shake it, but for the purpose of the video, there's no sediment at all. Crystal clear, uh, and I can only put that down to the filter that I got, the Vinbright filter. It did take about 25 minutes for one gallon to pass through it. Uh, I didn't change the pad, but I did change the paper. Um, but yeah, this is more of a sweeter wine because my missus prefers a sweeter wine. I like a drier wine. Um, but here's a case of that. That is, I tried to mimic, I think it, what is it called? Moscato, I tried to mimic it because she really likes it. Um, but it's about seven pound a bottle. Whereas this cost me a pound a bottle. Put in the apple juice because we've already got the strawberry juice and one and a half cups of caster sugar. In there. This is not fun with one hand. But yeah, I found the, um, what do you call it? Funnel. I'll go and get my additives in the end. Citric acid, I've just gone and bought another bulk buy of that. You can just use uh, lemon or lime juice. Um, it's just to give it, you know, citric acid is an acid regulator. It's not to put in there um, every single time you brew. For example, if you're using lemon or if you're making a mead and you're using lemon and honey or something, you don't need it. Uh, it's just there to give you. Uh, it's it's not a tannin. It's not. It's it's just it's a it's like a it's almost like a tartiness on your tongue. It makes your tongue tingle, uh, which is what some people like in wine. And most winemakers, to my knowledge, use it. So that's why I use it. But it's not essential. A bit of lemon juice, all you can do without it. But yeah, just the cheap apple juice will work. I mean, I've seen people on YouTube use really expensive stuff and there's really no need. Uh, it's beyond me why you would choose something that's £2.50 a carton to something that's 67p. Which is funny because one litre of apple juice in Asda is 65p. One and a half litres is 67p. So for every two you buy, it costs you 4p and you get a new litre, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, I think this is still ridiculously hot. Okay, we're looking for between realistically 20 and 25 or 18 and 26. Uh, 22 is normally good at the minute. We're at 70, 71 and 72 and climbing. So we will put him back in the Sterilising solution, and I should really put him in a Bamaria cold water, but I mean I've got a lot of stuff going on over here. I've got airlocks and fish and stuff, but no, I will cool this water down. I think that might be a little bit. A little bit too much water, but we'll have a go. No, it's fine. It's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. I've just noticed that I have broken my hydrometer. Uh, which is a fucking pain in the ass Because this was my good hydrometer. But I will fix him, nonetheless. I will do a little repair job. Uh, if that fails, I've got another two hydrometers upstairs. Fuck a duck. But yeah, anyway. Moving on. So we'll leave him in there. We've got him in there. I will go upstairs and get the additives that we need. Okay, so this has cooled down now to a reasonable temperature that is not going to shatter the demijohn. I hope. Um, now that I've said that. I don't really want to risk it just yet. So instead, what 
I think I'm gonna do is get some ice. There's some ice, there's some ice. A sterile surface. Not that it matters because it's not going in the brew. This is just gonna cool down the water a little bit more. I mean it's gonna work a little bit quicker. Put the ice tray back empty so my missus can have a moan at me tomorrow. I'm pretty sure all men do stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean while we're waiting we can always, you know, go and listen to the rain. What a lovely day. Lovely day. Okay, so we can now add in the strawberry as it's cooled down. Just get that in with the apple juice. Give that a little swirl. And the colour just changes and it looks amazing. And then I'm going to give this a shake and then we'll do a hydrometer reading on it. Come back pretty good on the hydrometer. Uh, he should be around 7% which is ideal for a cider really. Um, so I'm going to crack on with the additives now. Okay so this is pretty much all we need. Get rid of the funnel. Um, so we're going to go in with a teaspoon of yeast nutrient which is basically food for the yeast this is my teaspoon <laughs> it's just food for the yeast really my camera over focuses uh, yes yeah, full of vitamins and uh, should make the yeast work a little bit more efficiently citric acid because it is a cider it's not going to be a a sour dry wine, so cool, I need half of that. Wow. We don't want it to be uh, too acidic, but again, we can change that at the end. I will show you in due course. Uh, the overall job of bentonite clay or pectinate, well, pectinase will break down the pectin, obviously, in fruit, and uh, which is basically like this, the cell wall, um, and will make more of the uh, actual fleshy part of the fruit although it looks like there's none in it there is and it will drag that to the bottom which is what you want because at the end you get a clear result bentonite clay is basically full as earth uh, what you can use to give yourself a face mask but they do set it for brewing so bentonite clay will basically with static electricity latch on to all the particles that are in here and bring them down uh, but pectilase will do a adequate job as well. So just a quarter of a teaspoon of that goes in there. Uh, I'm not going to dump the yeast in until I have checked what the temperature is. As I am not looking to kill off the yeast. Just hold that in there for a few seconds. Ooh, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo. We we're looking, as I said, for between uh, twenty and twenty-five. Twenty-two is normally good. That's what I normally aim for. I'm on twenty-three at the minute. Twenty-three, getting high. Twenty-three point two. So so far we have a seven percent. Uh, alcohol providing that the yeast does its job and ferments out all of the sugar turning it into alcohol uh, where are we 23.3 is still climbing gotta persist with this bit otherwise you'll kill off your yeast anything higher than 26 and it's dead <laughs> 23.3 so we should be good we should be good. Twenty-three point three. Yeah, we we good. We good. We good. So we'll put that back over there, and we will pitch the yeast. 
So I've got the yeast, I've had it open for a couple of minutes just to give it an air in because at the start of fermentation a bit of oxygen or nitrogen is good. So we're just going to put, put probably half the sachet in here. I used to put the whole sachet in and I'd find that it would over ferment. Um, I heard that it, the quantity of yeast uh, to juice will not affect the overall alcohol content but I disagree. I mean, the more yeast you put into something like this, the more it's going to, you know, a volcano. I, I truly believe that. For experience of brewing for the past seven months or however long I've been going. I'd say that was about half and I would say that was efficient. So this half I will roll up and uh, put aside. You see it will drop in. That's what you want. So basically when you pitch the yeast, uh, providing you've not done a yeast starter, the yeast should fall down to the bottom and hatch, as I like to call it. I don't know what the, the actual name is for it, but it will hatch. And the shells, obviously not not every shell contains a yeast. That would be silly. You'd, you'd actually see like little fish <laughs> swimming around in it. So basically every cell would have, say, 500,000 yeast cells in it. So basically all of this would eventually drop down to the bottom and hatch. The little shells would crack open and once empty would float back up to the top and then drop down again, which is good. That's what you want. And then, I don't know, in an hour, two hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, you'll start to see that they keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's due to the yeast being active, eating the sugar, turning it into alcohol, providing the airlocks on. And it's the CO2 that's, that's generated that carbonates the demijohn that will, the little bubbles will bring up the yeast shells, uh, which is good because you know it's, a, it's active, providing that you don't have an airlock, which I hope you do because it's kind of essential uh, because you want to eliminate oxygen. You can leave this kind of gap at the start um, because this is currently full of air, but as the yeast uh, become active, it will force the air out. It will? What will? The carbon dioxide <laughs> produced from the yeast will force out the nitrogen oxygen mix through the airlock and then you'll be left with something that's sterilized but that's not necessarily the case at the end uh, i'd say maybe four days three or four days preferably a little bit longer providing you didn't want it to over ferment i would top this up with apple juice uh, just to the neck uh, not all the way up to the top because you need to leave room for the airlock and that's good to sit there and and do its job more of falling down, here we go, second lot. I've seen some people shake, I never have, I just don't see the, the, the point. I think it's to introduce oxygen into it because yeast need it at the start. Um, but I know when I've said enough and I am rabbiting a little bit. So I would get the airlock that's been sitting in the sterilising solution, pop it on. Mm. If it starts to catch up the sides like it is a little bit here because of me keep tapping it, I'll give it a little shake, a little swirl. It should be good to go. So we have a 7% alcohol, providing the yeast do their job. Uh, strawberry cider. Uh, the, last, the last one I made tasted really good, which has made me go out and get the ingredients to do more. So if I was to make this now and put it away, uh, it should be good for Christmas, which is brilliant. Who don't want a little bit of strawberry fizz on Christmas? Uh, but it's just it's putting it away when you've only got the one gallon it's you know it tastes so good i know it's good because my missus drinks it uh, and she's very fussy but yeah the idea is to make something that comes close to that and hopefully educate you on how to do it and it may seem simple you know get some apple juice put it in a jar and add a bit of this and a bit of that but to be honest the, the main thing you really need is not experience or education it's time if you, do the, if you do this process correctly and you nail it and you do it right and everything's clean and sterilized and it's done properly and you can leave it for a good six months to a year, uh, you'll be amazed at the outcome. It, it will be as good if not better than something you could buy. It is really good. I mean, for a hobby, I've been doing this for seven months and already I, I'm still amazed. You know, every time I crack something new open, I'm like, whoa, I made that. And that tastes like so and so, you know, tastes like, you know, white Zinfandel or, or something similar. 
and I'm amazed, you know. So that's the yeast drop to the bottom. There's not really a lot else going on in it. Uh, but I'll update you uh, as this is hatching out, etc. I'm just going to pop the airlock on. I'll do that now. So I've got the bung. Just pop the bung on. Give it a little slap. Off you go. Nearly lost it. Got the airlock. And I filled in with sterilising solution. A little bit too high, actually. Get rid of some of that. Shake it out of the bottom. And then squeak, squeak, squeak. Twelve squeaks later, he's happy. We'll just get the stop off. Just stops anything falling in, like flies or whatever wants to fall in. But that's practically it. So we've had one litre of Caribbean strawberry. Caribbean strawberry, a taste of the Caribbean. Um, yeah, I, I would normally use Ribena, but they didn't have it, uh, so that, that should do the job equally. It is 7% alcohol by volume, which is ideal. Uh, any less, and it would be a bit weak, any stronger, and you're going into the wine category of things. And yeah, so one litre of strawberry juice and three litres of apple juice. And after four days, you would top this up to the top with apple juice and uh, you will just put it aside and leave it. So yeah, that's practically it. I will update the video. I know I said I'd do a second part to a video on YouTube and someone messaged me saying, hey, where's this number two, where's number two? But I'm new, you know, I've not been doing it long. Uh, I don't know if this is the right way, but this is my way. And I know everyone says that, but it's true. This came out absolutely awesome. I can't stress that enough. It tasted better than something I could have bought in the shop. And I've tried Brothers Strawberry Cider, I've tried Bournemouth, what is it, Strawberry Cider, uh, Mixed Fruit Cider, and this was actually better. Uh, and although it takes a little bit of work, it costs a pound a bottle. Not a little bottle either, a proper bottle, a wine bottle. And I shouldn't actually recommend that you do it in these bottles. I shouldn't recommend these bottles, but again, I make, I've, made, I've made some really cool stuff in the past. That has not exploded, but then I've made some really, really, really cool stuff that has exploded. I'm not talking about the bottles actually cracking and going bang. I'm talking more about the second you touch the lid, it will pop off, providing you're using screw caps and you're not using corks, because the corks will probably go bang and shoot out. But yeah, I've always used these bottles and they work. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have champagne bottles and the wire and the cork and all the equipment that's involved in doing something like that, then go for it. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you haven't got champagne bottles, the best thing I can do is recommend that you go to a like a bottle bank. If you, I don't know whether you have them where you are, but where I live, you have bottle banks. Like in car parks and supermarkets where you can recycle bottles. Uh, and when they get full, people leave them you know, by the floor or whatever. Or just leave a little sign somewhere saying, please, can you leave me your champagne bottles? Uh, and uh, they generally work. But I don't use them because I find that the tops and the wire and is a little bit too expensive in the long run. I mean, if we're talking about a pound a bottle, the second you start putting wire mesh on the top and corks, you're talking about two pound a bottle. You know, and that could be a, a, a that could be another whole case of this. So if you're willing to take the risk of using normal bottles that are not supposed to be carbonated, you know, it's worth the risk. You know, if you make a case of six and one explodes. Count your losses. Just make sure you wrap it in a, you know, a tea towel first. Don't, you know, <laughs> make sure you wear protective gear. <laughs> but that's basically it. And uh, I hope it's been informative and I'm not rabbited on. Rabbited on? Rabbited on too much. Uh, but yeah, I will bring you a second part. Sorry if this has been a bit long-winded. I am new. And it's kind of hard making videos on a phone when it keeps cutting out every 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy it. If you do make it, it pff, let me know. Definitely let me know how it turned out. I'll be highly interested if you attempt something like this. But yeah, thanks again and I'll see you soon.